So I've painted over another painting, but I've only left this deer right here who's grazing, and since he's grazing, grazing, that sounds weird. See, he's eating, you don't see his head, you just see his hiding up in the air. But I left this because I think this would be very interesting in this new painting that I'm going to create. And I think it would be an interesting focal point. And an interestingly placed focal point because rarely do you see your focal point on the right end of the painting. Right bottom end of it. Hopefully I can make it work. I have faith. So this is going to be a landscape. So I'm going to start by outlining everything that I need just with orange paint so I don't lose the line. And there we have it. Very simple landscape. Once it dries, I'm gonna, I think, start with the sky. So I'm painting off of this photograph that I'm gonna show you here. This is where my parents grew up, and I lived there for a while when I was a toddler, or even a kid, because I remember going to pre-K there. And this is um, an ejido, named Ejido Potrero del Llano, but is more commonly known as La Mula, which directly translates to the mule. Why? That's a good question, I have no idea. But anyway, La Mula, or Ejido Potrero del Llano, as of 2010 census, had 120 inhabitants. Let me show you the Google image, and this is south of the border city of Ojinaga, Chihuahua. Now, what is an ejido, you're asking? So after the Mexican Revolution, there was a lot of social unrest and what the government did, they created ejidos, the Mexican state created ejidos or granted lands to communities so they could be farmed. So basically it was a land grant. You got, you got a parcel of land where you were able to build your home, farm it, and they were usually located near neighboring cities. So this one's close to Ojinaga, Chihuahua. But when Mexico entered the North American Free Trade Agreement in 1991, President Carlos Salinas de Gortari, President Carlos Salinas de Gortari declared the end of awarding ejidos. So he said no more free land and allowed the existing ejidos to be rented or sold. So if you had this parcel of land at this point, you were able to sell it, rent it, and it was officially yours to do with it as you may. So that'd be cool to get free land, you know, from the government. Especially now with how expensive everything is. But anyway, this scene right here is the railroad tracks in La Mula, Ojido Potrero del Llano. We live somewhere on this side of the tracks. And then this shipping container stored water, which I don't know how it didn't corrode because it must have been lined with something inside. But anyway, the, I don't know where the water came because this is very arid land. But this had water and this is still ex this still exists today, it's still there, but I don't think it has water anymore. And then this railroad tracks takes you to the capital of Chihuahua, which is Chihuahua City. And I rode that train, I don't remember how many times, but I remember going to the capital in that train. And that was kind of cool, but that doesn't happen anymore. This is a tribute to my childhood, the place where my parents grew up, and where they still go to till this day. So I guess this is a painting of my roots. 
my parents' roots, so I better do a good job. <laughs> I'm not a realist painter by any means, so I want to keep that colorful, bright, pop surrealist aspect that I think my work is about or consists of. I have an idea in my head, but sometimes that doesn't always translate. I feel like when I paint skies, they're very linear. Like it's very much from east to west type of thing. And this time I want to not do this number, you know, where it's like east to west, left to right. That's what creates this linear skyline or clouds or whatever. Now I want it to be a little bit more, I don't know, more, what's the word I'm looking for? More dynamic. Like I don't want it to necessarily make sense. I love Taco Bell and I get these cups every time I go to Taco Bell so I wash them and I use them to store my paint. Now we need some clouds. Sometimes I feel like Having the right brush makes your painting easier. And if you don't have the right brush, it makes it that much harder. I feel like I still see the orange and that is problematic. That's cute. See, I don't want this, that type of movement because I feel I did that in the last painting. I want this to be different. So since I'm going for art pop, or pop art vibes, the mountain range will be purple. And yeah, purple, royal colors. <laughs> I made a mistake. The sky looks purple. So you can see that dumb color right there. So now I have to redo everything that I had done with the sky. I am now down with the sky, now to move on to the mountains. And I have to redo the tower, but that'll be easy. So now I've added green. I don't know how intense or bright I want this green, but I do want this to be gold. So I'm going to add a red base because gold paint works best over gold. I mean, gold paint works best over red paint. I won't go all the way down, I think I'll end it around. Some red and green for Christmas. So this black that's showing up is charcoal from the previous painting. I kind of like it. Bam! It looks good. Brought in some yellow and I fixed the shape on the top of the box thing. I can still see parts of the orange that I think might be a little problematic. But if that's the case, then I'm going to let this orange show through so it matches what's going to show through on here. So it's starting to take shape and I'm starting to like where it's headed. So I didn't want the water to run down in the other direction, so I just flipped it the other way around. That way the water goes in the direction I needed to, so it facilitates the painting process. So I started adding the stonework and I'm surprised at how fast this is going. It still needs a lot of work though. I think I'm gonna, I think I wanna add like rocks, grass, small little details that will make a world of difference. El diablo está en los detalles. So I've made some progress and I'm really excited for where it's going, but I had to people tell me that they don't like the deer. And that's actually my favorite part. I like how it's disruptive, you know? It's like right in the middle of the railroad tracks. You can't see his head. And I like that it creates this sense of like, okay, what is he doing? Why is the head cut off? Head is not cut off. So 
in my head, the idea or the concept is you were taking a picture and right as you snapped the picture, the deer moved his head down to continue gra gracing and that's the shot that you got. I think going for the deer eating versus like him just staring at you or being completely head up is too predictable and I don't know, I don't think to me predictable is boring. This is what it currently looks like. Getting closer to finishing. These rocks are taking forever. But I do like how the railroad looks. Very minimalistic, but the gold makes it stand out a lot. I love it. I don't remember what I did last, <laughs> but I know it's progress from this current state it's in. I'm getting eager because it's really close to being finished. This is where we're at, making a lot of progress, and I can't wait to finish it, really. I just want to see it all put together, see if it matches the vision I had in my mind. I'm done with the pillar on the left, so I got three more to go. It's so tedious, but I really want to get that part out of the way now, so I can move on with the rest. So I have now finished all four pillars. Time now to add all the finishing touches. Love, love, love. I'm almost done. I took the deer out, which I... Was sad about it, but the customer didn't want it. And oddly enough, they thought something was missing on this side. And I'm like, yeah, it's the deer. But so I'm adding like little stones and grass and things like that to balance it with that side over here. So that's what we're at. So I am done and I absolutely love it. I think this was a good addition because it, now it looks more balanced. I do miss the deer, but I do like how this looks. And I didn't do rocks on this side because I didn't want it to compete with this. So there's like a, so the painting is balanced nicely. Uh, I like it. I love it. Now, if we look at the original photograph, obviously it doesn't look like that, but I'm not a realist painter and this was just loosely inspired by that photograph. And I'm also manifesting rains in this area. That's why it's so green and lush. Well, I love how it looks on this wall, but it won't be here very long because it's going to its new home. But I like it. Let me show you what that painting now looks like in its home. It actually looks very small just because the wall is so large and there's nothing else on that wall other than this painting. I feel like when it was in my place, it looked huge just because my walls are not as large and <laughs> it was literally surrounded by a plethora of other paintings that were quite smaller. But in this setting it, it looks quite small but it's not why it's large also still has to get framed so once it gets framed it'll add more volume to it i think it's a great addition to the space it brings in a lot of color and like the gold on the railroad interacts with the light so it's it's interactive now i gotta work on this small one a mini version this one i'm gonna try to go a little bit more realistic i am done with this one the first one had its own set of like obstacles. This one had many, <laughs> uh, especially those cement pyramids. I don't know what they were used for. And let me put the photograph up. They're in there. They're just not visible because of the shrubs and the mesquite tree in front. But what was their purpose? I don't know. How many are there? I don't know. I just kind of took a guess. But I like. But I also, this whole process has reminded me that I don't like to paint landscapes. <laughs> <laughs> now this is the third and final one which I think is going to be the easiest to paint because one and two allowed me especially one I made the most mistakes in one and therefore it took the longest because I had to correct those mistakes what I learned in the first one I applied to the second one and now everything that I learned off of one and two will allow three to go super fast and also I'm going to make it grayscale there's not going to be any green <laughs> at least I don't think at this point. Uh, I want it very muted, very black and gray, so we'll see how it goes. So I did finish the third one, and to no surprise, it's my favorite one because, you know, third time's a charm. And, you know, I learned along the way what worked in one and painting two and what didn't work, and I applied that to the last one. And it's actually my favorite one. It's the most successfully executed one, but I didn't take a picture of it. I actually just finished it during the winter holiday and it's at my mom's house so she's not home otherwise I would have had her send me a picture to upload to this video but it is the best one so and it's also the last one I don't intend on making any more landscapes I it's, it's just not my thing I have never understood why people like landscapes especially when you can just take a photograph and if you love it so much have that photograph enlarged and printed 
But, I mean, if it's abstract, landscape abstract, or surreal, or pop, mixed into the landscape, then I could probably be convinced to work on something like that, but to get like a realistic photographic representation, don't even ask, because the answer will be no. <laughs> well, anyway, that's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Adios y bye.